So David wrote about the many ways God loved and cared for him. Mm -hmm. And you know what? God loves and cares for you. Thank you. Another allegory by Jesus. We've been talking about these allegories he keeps telling the Pharisees from week to week. So I decided enough with the allegories. Today we're going to look at the reading from Philippians. <laughs> Paul begins this portion of his letter to his congregation in Philippi by asking them to help two of the women leaders in the congregation to settle a quarrel they're having. We aren't told what their disagreement is about, but Paul would like them to find a common ground and find peace with one another and stop quarreling. But just how are they to go about this? How are they to, to get them to stop quarreling and to listen to one another. And he says, by remembering whose they are, who they belong to, by remembering who's in charge, who has power over heaven and earth, and by practicing patience and forbearance and the joy that Christ has taught them. So how does, as we're looking at Philippi, how does a congregation in conflict or members of a congregation in conflict or a community in crisis, as some of Paul's congregations were and some of his followers were, how do they lean into and practice the art of patience, the art of gentleness, or as one commentator translated it, forbearance, how do they practice the discipline of communal joy? Well, for Paul, it's done through practice and through discipline and through changing one's perspective. One has to practice patience. Anyone want to disagree with that? Patience come easily for any of you? No, it doesn't for me. One has to have the discipline of prayer. Joy comes only through changing one's perspective on the situation, Paul says. And this is what he's asking of his followers, his congregation in Philippi to let things go that cause conflict, tension, and lack of peace, both inner and outer peace. Made me think of a Mary Engelbright card I put on my refrigerator that said, sometimes you just have to stop watering dead plants. <laughs> right? Yeah. Let it go. That that it was only then, if you could let it go, they could remember and live into their relationship with God, and then they would find that peace. They'd find the peace in their world crisis, in their conflicted congregation, and in their personal lives. But it was only because it was because it was only God's peace that could overcome their anxiety, their sorrow, their anger, their conflict, their crisis that was all around them. And Paul knew what he was talking about because where is Paul when he writes this letter to the Philippians? He's in prison. 
He's in prison, and he has an unknown future. He doesn't know what's going to happen to him. So I'm sure that Paul was writing this out of his own anxiety and sorrow and anger and chaos and despair and conflict. So how does one in Paul's situation find inner and outer peace and joy of which he speaks in this passage from Philippians? He says that he finds it by looking for joy in the midst of his situation. That for him, joy is a discipline that he practices. Now, I've never really thought of joy as a discipline. I've thought of joy as something that you feel or just kind of experience when something good happens. But he's talking, what he's talking about is it's not a quiet or private or personal joy that most of us probably practice. For Paul, joy is out loud, it's public, it's only joy when it's shared. For Paul, it's not complete unless it's shared joy. And he says, joy is not the goal, but a sign, a sign of the presence of the risen Christ in one's life and world. And it's an outcome of acknowledging and delighting in the presence of the risen Christ in one's world. Paul says, this is what sustains him. This is what delights him. This is why he could shout his joy from the rooftops, if he could get to the rooftop of the prison. Paul recognizes that living in this joy doesn't mean that one's escaped the pains of life. That we can have joy in the midst of all the yuckiness that life throws at us. Simply that one has chosen to look at where one is from a different and liberating perspective. It made me think of when people talk about, are you a glass half full or a glass half empty person, right? It's about your perspective on life and perspective on your situation. Can you find joy in the situation in which you're in? It doesn't change the situation, right? The glass is still either half empty or half full. But if we can change our perspective, then we can change everything about where we're at. But it relies on our ability to believe in a God who is for us. A God who is near, a God who cares, a God who loves and does not abandon us like a shepherd. So Paul exhorts his people in Philippi to rejoice out loud in public. How does that sound to your senses? Easy to do? It's been my experience that this is not something ethnic Scandinavians and Germans, Lutherans, <laughs> are prone to do. I can only guess, however, that it would be something that ethnic Hispanic and black Lutherans are prone to do, I've never had the pleasure of attending one of our predominantly black Lutheran or Hispanic Lutheran churches. I really hope to someday in my travels because I really expect to experience a whole different feel in liturgy from our traditional 
Scandinavian German Lutheran worship. <laughs> but actually, Trinities come pretty close to rejoicing in the Lord always. Of any congregation I've heard have the privilege of sharing or serving. Now, if you ever stood close by when I'm in the back at the end of the service, you might hear me say, the people said with enthusiasm, <laughs> after the assisting minister says, go in peace, and the people respond, thanks be to God. The people said with enthusiasm. <laughs> I say it somewhat tongue in cheek, because again, ethnic Scandinavians and German Lutherans aren't really known for their public enthusiasm, but shouting out, I or we love this church, that is rejoicing out loud. So we need to learn from Paul how to live each day, each week, each hour, truly and fully believing that the Lord is near and letting that make a difference in our lives, in our relationships, in our outlooks on life. Trusting that God is here, trusting in God's peace, that God's peace can surpass anything life throws at us. And opening ourselves up to God's peace through prayer and forbearance. And in the words of Paul, we need to keep on doing the things that we have learned and received and heard from him, and the God of peace will be with us. So I'm going to invite you into rejoicing out loud in a appropriate Lutheran way <laughs> by singing one of my favorite hymns, which to me is a song of rejoicing as we sing it literally to God. So turn to 525. Nope, we're gonna do that one after. Turn to 525. You can stand or sit, but this is our out loud public rejoicing to God. rejoicing out loud. Let us go now to the banquet, number 523, and you're welcome to sing in Spanish if you prefer.
Let us pray. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of all grace, you're the source of life and joy. Strengthen the resolve of your church throughout the world that together we press on towards the goal of your heavenly call in Jesus Christ. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all creation, you plant and nourish the earth as your own precious vineyard. Bless fields and orchards and the hands of those who labor in them, that your people are fed with an abundant harvest of good fruit. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all the earth, you desire peace and justice between nations and peoples. Guide leaders of nations, states, provinces, and cities that they faithfully govern your people with wisdom, integrity, and compassion. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all compassion, in Christ you lovingly poured yourself out like wine for your people. Have mercy on all who mourn, who struggle with their mental health, who cry out for justice, who hunger, and all in any need. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all steadfastness, you set Christ as the cornerstone and foundation of the church. Build up this congregation as living stones, that it stands in the community as a witness to your enduring faithfulness and love. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of patience, Help us develop and live in patience as we work through our call process. God of grace. Hear our prayer. God of all hope, the saints who came before us lived and died with their hearts fixed on you. We give you thanks for their faithful witness. We wait with hope for the great day when we join their voices in praise. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your unending love and amazing grace, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Our liturgy continues with the offering, and we invite Margretta to come forward. She has a solo for us today.
Let us pray. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved, Jesus Christ, our Savior. duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which has been given for you. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which has been shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us and send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Behold what you are. We are the body of Christ. These are the gifts of God. For the people of God, all are welcome to Christ's table. You may be seated.
Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word. Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts, strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Invite me for Let's come forward. Good morning. So I've been asked. I've, I've come up here, and uh, I'd like to share just a just a brief story with you. And I and I did get permission from the other person involved in this story to actually tell it to all of you. So when Janet and the, Michael and Katie and I first started coming to first started coming to this church, we actually were. Do you guys remember the uh, the 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 early con uh, the, the early, early services that we used to do? Yeah. We actually started with that because that actually worked quite a bit better for us. But what that also meant is we did not spend a lot of time at um, social hour. And so when we first started coming, we, asked, we, we, we came in the, after the first service, we, we absolutely loved it. We, we loved the place. It, it was great. And there was a Saturday right after that, not too long after we started coming, that uh, Janet and Michael and Katie were off, and she may have been actually with Janet's mom, but I, I was at home working on some stuff. And as I, was, as I was kind of coming up over the top of what I was working on, I noticed that there was a car sitting in my driveway that I didn't recognize. I went, well, that's kind of odd. And then I heard somebody knocking on the door. And uh, I didn't want to yell because where I was, it honestly would have freaked them out. And so I waited, going, okay, well, there's nobody down there to actually answer the, answer the phone. I don't want to scare this poor person to death. So, so they walked out from the front door, started walking back to the car, and I, and I actually recognized this, this nice lady. And I, now it's a matter of, okay, do I say something? Because if I do, I'm going to scare her to death. <laughs> and... Uh, so I was, I, was, I was sitting there debating this. She got to her car and I said, hey Mary, how you doing? And yes, she jumped. <laughs> but I will tell you, what I was doing is I, I, is I was putting up Christmas lights for my daughter and I was on the roof of our house. <laughs> and the front door was right here below me and as she's walking out, I'm looking at her, you guys remember that cartoon with Snoopy? <laughs> That's truly what I felt like. <laughs> and I went, okay, I, I wonder what she wanted. Well, she, she brought us a, a welcome bag and, and hung it on the door because normally we do that at, at social hour. We were coming, excuse me, we were coming early and so, so we didn't do that. So Mary Broderick was this nice lady that had come to our house. And I'm not a small guy and up on the roof of the house hanging Christmas lights, yeah, it's gonna be a little bothersome. <laughs> So, so I got her permission, and that's that's actually one of the one of the one of the stories <clears throat> when we first started coming that I that I love to share with people, and I don't know how many how many of you I've shared shared that with, but Mary and I always have a very good laugh about it because then I sat down on top of the peak of the roof right above our bedroom, and her and I had this conversation with her on the ground, me on the roof. <laughs> so it was uh, it, it it was a, it was a it was a definitely a, a, a great welcome to to Trinity. And, and we absolutely loved it, and so that's why I'm here today. He is uh, is I'm gonna uh, we're we're beginning our annual fall appeal uh, today. Over the next few weeks, uh, there's going to be three different members of the congregation sharing stories with you that tie back to the uh, the initiatives that uh, the council has actually co come out with, and we're we're asking you to prayerfully consider your giving to the church, um, and uh, uh, to help us to uh, meet these initiatives uh, for this year. And the theme around those is welcome. Okay, That's one of the things I think our church is really, truly, truly good at is, is welcoming people. And so we're looking to help support that going forward, especially in, in a call process, especially with everything that, uh, that is going, excuse me, going on uh, in the congregation, helping to create 
that welcome environment. And so you'll be getting emails, you'll be getting uh, stuff through snail mail, if you guys are familiar with that term, um, that uh, will help outline what those are. But uh, we wanted to make sure to get this kicked off and, and I wanted to share that story with you. So welcome to the Fall Appeal. Please rise as you are able. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is Numbers 536. Paul for conversation. Go in peace. God is at work in you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.